Uh, welcome. My name is Martin Jones from the company Hoyle. I'm a member of the area sales management team here at the headquarters in Switzerland. And welcome to this technical presentation where we'll be looking at the marriage of two completely separate worlds. On the one side, the mechanical deburring of a workpiece in the machine. On the other side, the digital monitoring of the results of the deburring process. But first, a few uh, facts about the company Hoyle. As mentioned, we are a Swiss company with the headquarters here in Balgach. Uh, we are represented, however, throughout the world, partly through a network of daughter companies. Here you see in America, Germany, China and Korea, but also through a network of carefully selected and highly trained exclusive partners. The goal of this network is to keep the know-how and the consultation expertise close to the customer. So let's dive in and take a look at the problems involved inherent with drilling and deburring. Here I've listed a few of the typical situations which the customer may face. Uh, I'd like to just discuss a couple with you. Burr formation, burr variation. A burr is not only a burr. Uh, it could be that the burr will change depending on what materials we are machining, the quality of the drill, how sharp is the drill, cutting speeds, cutting feeds, etc. These things all have an effect, an impact on the formation of the burr. It could be that the, the type of surface that we are drilling or deburring will have a big effect on the quality of the deburr that I can achieve. For example, if the surface is maybe not, uh, not flat, but rather uneven, or in worst case, if I'm drilling a hole through a round pipe, then I have a wave form on the edge that I'm trying to deburr. However, they all bring their problems. What does this mean for the customer? First of all, process security. The customer wants to be able to guarantee the quality is being met each and every time without having to check each and every workpiece. The more time that I invest in quality control, in checking, in rectifying problems, this is costing the customer money. Material cost can also be a big issue. If materials are not deburred correctly, this could mean the generation of scrap materials, waste materials, which in the end, of course, cost time and money. In order to guarantee process security and quality of the deburr, and a 100% check needs to be made each and every time, this could also involve manual labor. So having a separate process off of the machine in order to check the quality of the results. So how does the customer go about solving these problems? Well, first, we need to form a consultation team. And this team for the deburring consists of the customer, of course, with his, uh, uh, with his problem, with his workpiece, and then the specialist in the deburring applications, which would be the company Hoyle. I cannot tell you how often customers, uh, workshop managers, machine operators have come to us and said, hey, uh, the guys in the design office, they put features on paper which are very difficult or even impossible to realize on the shop floor. And it's the job of Hoyle together with the customer to find the solution to solve these problems. So first of all, the consultation, then we need to define the right tooling for the job. Once this is done, we then take it to the next step by providing the customer with the tools that we believe will satisfy his requirements. And then we can carry the tests out on the shop floor on his workpiece. So now let's move on to a real life application that we have with a large supplier to the automotive industry. Here we see the picture of the internal workings of a pump. And we have a quite a challenging situation here of deburring the edges between two interconnecting bores. So we have here, we have one, two, and then this one, the third one here. For the first two here, this one, the top of the bottom, it wasn't so much of a challenge. We could actually use standard tooling for this. The third one presented more of a challenge and we had to use a specialist tool 
for, um, for cross-bore deburring. What the customer needed to achieve was to have complete 100% process security without the spot checking. So here we have a picture of the customer setup. This is the machine shop where we see all of the machines producing the work pieces. This is the tool that has been used. However, in order to achieve this 100% guarantee of quality, the customer then had to check each and every workpiece. Why? Because of potential sporadic problems. What do I mean by a sporadic problem? This is not a problem which will develop gradually over the course of time, but rather one that changes and creates the problem or the error very suddenly. So the customer wanted to do away with all of this uh, secondary quality control because it costs a lot of money. When the customer came to us with the challenge, the first thing that we wanted to do was to see which tooling can we use. I mentioned before that with two of the bores, we could actually get away with two standard tools. So seen here, the four millimeter, and the 5.7 highlighted in green. One tool, however, uh, we had to invest a little bit more time and investigate in more depth and to use a special tool in, from our Kofa X range. So let's take a look at the tools in a little more detail. For the first two applications where I mentioned we can use the standard tools, we used our Kofa tool, which is the standard go-to solution for deburring front and back in one operation directly on the machine. It's a very easy to use tool. We can go down to a diameter of down to two millimeters, so really quite small, and it uses a coated sintered carbide blade, which uh, we can change accordingly depending on the materials that we are using. And the blade is very, very easy and simple to replace. If we look at the tool in a little more detail, we see here we have the tool body. Then we have what we call the spring, which is a very important component in the tool. I'll explain how this works uh, shortly. We have the, the blade holder and the blade itself. The function of the spring is actually two functions. First of all is to always to return the blade to its neutral position once it's finished deburring. And the second function is to exert the correct amount of force on the edge for cutting. The harder the material, then the higher the cutting force we need. So we would use a stiffer spring. So it's quite a simple construction for the Kofa tool. Uh, but to give you an idea very clearly of how this works, let's take a look at a short video. We see the tool starting, and in one operation, we can deburr the top and the bottom. And as you see here in this example, on a flat surface at the top, but the rounded surface on the bottom of the workpiece. Here we see again in slow motion. As the tool, as the blade moves into the hole, it starts to cut. Once it gets deeper into the hole, we no longer have contact between the cutting edge and the edge, rather the end of the blade, which is rounded. And this ensures that the blade will fold into the tool correctly. There we see. Here is also a very good example of the deburring of a non-flat surface, an uneven surface, which would also be typical of, for example, drilling a hole in a rounded piece of bar or pipework. So for the two standard applications, we could use the standard Kofa tool. However, as I mentioned, one of the cases we needed to use the Kofa X tool, which is the solution from Hoyle for cross-bore deburring. What do I mean by cross-bore deburring? Well, as we see here, where we have one hole which will intersect with another bore and the intersection here is the edge that we want to deburr. And for this, we need to use a special tool that we call the Kofa X. It is for use with front or back 
deburring. So if I'm only deburring the top edge, I use one tool. If I'm deburring the bottom edge, as in the case with the pump manufacturer here, um, it is a back edge deburring tool. The smallest diameter, we go down to four millimeters. In this case, we use coated sintered carbide blades, just like with the Kofa. Uh, the blade is easily replaced. And with this tool, the Kofa X, we utilize the maximum functionality of the CNC machining center. The construction of the tool is very similar to the Kofa. We have our main tool body, we have a spring, we have our blade. The operation, however, is a little bit different. Let's take a look at that with the video. I'll talk you through it. So here we have the workpiece, in this case, a couple of valves. So the tool, when it enters into the workpiece, will be stationary. Uh, and because the tool needs to be moved away from the side of the hole so it can enter into the workpiece, the tool will be offset. Once I get into the hole, I bring the tool back into the center of the bore. Then I can start the spindle rotation. And now we can see very, very clearly how the movement of the blade will follow the uneven waveform surface of the edge. Once this is completed, I can then very easily extract the tool from the workpiece. And that's the function of the Copper X. Here we see a couple of examples of various cross-bore results, deburring results. In these cases, uh, the optics are not so important. It is not that so important to have a defined rounded edge or a defined chamfer, but rather a clean broken edge. So we've now defined the tools that we want to use for deburring these holes. How do we now go forward? Well, with the two standard applications, it's just a simple process to define the parameters. We know exactly what size tool we need to use. We know the spring hardness. We know the coating for the blade. We therefore just need to decide on cutting speeds, cutting feeds. That's it. With the second application, which requires the Kofa X, this took a little bit more uh, work, a little bit more attention. We needed to make tests in the company to optimize the process and the tool. Uh, we made some modifications, for example, to the blade which we were using. Uh, the end result was, of course, satisfactory then for the customer. One thing was missing, however, how to recognize these sporadic problems. And this is where we now need to bring in another member to the consultation team. With Hoyle, the customer will get expert attention when we are looking at the deburring itself. However, when we want to look at the digitalization, the digital real-time monitoring, we need to find an expert in this field. And this expert will come into the consultation team and the customer will discuss with this ex expert Things like, for example, the characteristics of the problem, the deburring forces which are acting on the tool, how to integrate this solution into the customer's machining process, et cetera, et cetera. Hoyle is responsible for the cutting tool. The integration of the monitoring is what the customer would discuss with the service provider. And how does this solution look? Well, we would have a tool holder here. Uh, here we see the Kofa tool from Hoyle mounted into the holder. And this tool holder is from the company Promicron or modified by company Promicron. And what this does, it will measure the deflection of the tool. So when the Kofa is cutting, there are forces acting on the tool in, for example, torsional forces, but also deflection forces. And these forces acting in these directions are what are then recorded by the sensors mounted inside this tool holder. And how do these forces look relating to the process? Let's take a look step by step. So here we have our Kofa tool, and we are now moving down in rapid feed to prepare 
bore deburring the edge of the hole. At this point, the forces are absolutely minimal. Then the tool will move into the hole, deburring the edge. And now, of course, the deburring forces acting on the tool will cause more deflection. And this will be recorded by the sensors here in the tool holder. And here we see with this arrow and the dot how the forces increase during this part of the process. The next step would be to prepare for deburring the back edge of the hole. So here I'm not cutting, so the forces are very, very low now. When I then move on to the next step, I'm now deburring the back edge, and here now the forces are increasing again, and these forces will be registered by our monitoring system. When I'm then moving back out of the bore in rapid feed, this will also be visible then on the chart when we're looking at the forces acting on the tool. So who is responsible for uh, these systems? Well, uh, in this case, it was the company Promicron. They were responsible for the procurement, also consultation for the special tool holder with the sensory array on board. Uh, because of non-disclosure reasons, we could not show exactly the customer's workpiece. Uh, however, here in the company, we made a, a mock-up using another uh, piece of material. And here you can see the COFA, the standard COFA tool in operation. We see the difference between the, the rapid feed and the working feed. And here, if you look below the workpiece, you will see the burrs very, very clearly. And what a great job the COFA tool does in removing these burrs. So we've seen the tool in operation, uh, but how does the digital monitoring look? So if we take off our machine operator glasses for one moment and put on our administrator glasses, then what we will see is this graphical representation here. And here we see the forces which are acting on the deburring tool during the operation. As uh, I mentioned at the beginning, this particular customer, the operation is a backward deburring only. So in operation number one, I'm passing the tool through the workpiece. Then I'm preparing to deburr the back edge. And then in the end, the last operation is to deburr the edge backwards. And this we see here very, very clearly in the graphical representation. So here, this peak indicates the blade passing through the hole. Then I have the deburring operation and then passing out of the hole. Very simple. However, the system needs to know what is correct and what is not correct. How do we achieve this? Well, we need to calibrate the system. And we do this by making a series of deburrs and recording the graphical uh, effects on deflection and torsion here in the system. And the more times, of course, I do this, then the more references I have for the what we would call the correct deburr. Once I have this, and then I get a situation, for example, like this one, or here, then the system will recognize this immediately as not being a standard deburr. It will know we now have a sporadic problem, and it will react accordingly by shutting down the machine. So how does this group of components, uh, how are they integrated into the process? First, we have the tool holder, in this case, manufactured by the company Recofix. They will manufacture a special tool holder suitable for the sensor array, which will be integrated by the company Promicron. The information generated by this sensor array will be hand it over to the PC via wireless, and then it will be represented graphically for the machine operator or administrator of the system. So we've seen that we make several deeper tests, if you will, to define what is the standard, what is a correct or a good deeper. 
and to teach the system what is not acceptable. If we go in and look in a little bit more detail at one of these, uh, one of these deeper cycles, it would look like this. The red line indicates the torsion which is acting on the tool, and the green line on the graph here is the bending moment which is acting on the tool. And so this would be repeated a number of times in order to teach the system, hey, this is the correct deburring representation. And anything outside of this means a sporadic error and immediate stop. We also see this here in this polar chart here. So we would have the repeated deburs, repeated cuts. And then when one of these dots, for example, would to be way out of this cloud here, then the system will know it, something is wrong with the system. I need to stop immediately. So what to take away from this presentation? Well, first of all, transparency and open communication from the side, especially of the customer within the consultation team. Hoyle is responsible for providing exactly the correct deburring solution to produce the deburring results which the customer needs. Promicron, on the other hand, is responsible for the communication and the consultation for the digital monitoring system. So the, it's important for the customer to create this consultation team, to have the open communication, uh, to pull in Hoyle at the design stage, not too late, but right at the design stage. The customer has access to all of these expertise he can achieve live monitoring of the deburring process. And this is a win-win situation for everybody. The end result for the customer is to be able to immediately recognize any sporadic errors in deburring, which could result in costly machine downtime or even damage to tooling and expensive work pieces. So from my side, I hope that was interesting for you to learn how we can marry these two worlds, mechanical deburring and the digital monitoring of these processes. If you require any further information, then please do not hesitate to contact us directly. A lot of information you can also find on our website, www.hoile.com. I thank you very much for your attention and look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.